Okay, fly time friends, I need some help here. One of our good friends of the channel, John from Saskatchewan, Canada, sent me a picture of a fly that he'd had some good luck with here a couple weeks ago. Now, John could not remember where he'd gotten it, and nobody in his fishing club could identify it either. So this is a picture he sent to me in a description. It was just a black hackle, golden pheasant tippets for a tail, and then some kind of orange or rusty orange fuzzy dubbing for a body with a thin wire rib wrapped up through it. And I looked through several of my books and couldn't find anything out there similar to it. So I want to put this question out there to y'all. Have any of y'all seen this pattern or anything close to it? And if so, can you identify it and maybe tell us where it came from? Now, I'm not going to make this a name the fly contest. It's quite possible this fly already does have a name, but it's just as possible that this is some experimental pattern that some guy came up with and it's got no name and somehow John ended up with a few of them in his box. But if someone does know the name and can send me a picture of it from some old book or a source online, you know, I'll send you a cool Savage Flies hat just to say thanks. But if this search comes up empty, and there's a pretty good chance it will, I'm just going to call this thing JD's Black and Orange, which is a pretty simple name for a pretty simple fly. So there it is in the vise, a black and rusty orange dry fly, kind of unknown, but probably a Canadian pattern. Now John did have his tied on a size 8 which is a pretty big dry fly and certainly bigger than anything I would be using. So I'm gonna go in the size 12. That's a one extra long barbless dry fly hook. And I'm gonna use some black thread. This is 70 denier. I'll lay a base down to where I'm gonna catch in the tail. And the tail on this was one of my favorite tailing materials, golden pheasant tippets. And this is just the last bit of a piece I'd been using. So I'm gonna use this whole thing. I'm not gonna cut them. I'm just gonna kind of bunch them up right here and this should keep the tips pretty well aligned so let's catch this in not real long maybe it's a, a body length maybe a little shorter i don't know let's go with that right there if we get both bars showing i think that looks pretty cool you could either snip or just bury this but since we got a kind of fuzzy body i'm just going to go ahead and bury it now it does have a fine wire rib for the for the rib which is a little bit odd for a dry fly, so I'm gonna catch it in about midway, but it's really, a, it's a small or an extra small. It's not gonna add any significant weight to keep this thing from, from floating, and we are gonna heavily hackle it, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. I just wouldn't use something as big as a, a brassy or a medium. Now let's put some wax on our thread and get ready to dub it. Now you said it was a hairline dubbing, and this is a, a crystal dub but it's really, it's something natural. I can't quite tell what it is, but it's that rust color right there with just a little bit of flash in it. So it's this stuff right here, which kind of looks a little bit like a rabbit, but you know, it's possible that it's, that it's a wool blend mix. And I'm gonna put a noodle on here, maybe two inches. We're gonna take it almost all the way up there to the eye. You know, we got a, a pretty heavily hackled fly up front, so maybe not too much, but I think two, two and a half, inches is going to be fine right here. Nope, that's not enough. Let's put a little more on here. Okay, I think that's going to work. Now I'm just going to counter wrap this rib. I'm not going to put them real close together. It's probably not going to be seen after a few fish, but it should make the fly a little more durable. Now I'm gonna leave my thread kind of far back because I wanna put maybe four or five wraps of this black dry fly hackle right here. So just catch it in right back here. And try to keep it a little bit perpendicular to the hook if you can. Now we'll take our thread up here and snip this stem. I got a little bit of that dubbing sticking forward, but we'll probably be able to bury that in our head. So let's go ahead and wrap this. Really, I don't know, four or five wraps, whatever you think looks good for a pretty heavily hackled fly here. Is that gonna be enough? I think so. We'll push it back a little bit, give us a little bit more bulk. 
before I snip that, I'm gonna push all these back, create a little flat area. Don't want them swept back, but I want a, an area up here where I can get my whip finish without trapping any extra fibers. Now we got this long stem right here and we'll see if we have any cleanup. Got a little bit of that dubbing sticking forward that I could probably singe off. But can I put some head cement on it and still get my tippet through there? Yes, I can, so I think we're fine. And if your body is a little bit fuzzy, I don't think it really matters. Maybe you want to trim it right there. But the fly he sent me a picture of, it was a pretty, pretty fuzzy fly. So I think we got the intent of it right there. And again, if you have any idea what this thing might be called, please leave a comment. But that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.